let's move over here to another one that I think a lot of fantasy players have questions about, which is this Buffalo Bills backfield. Yeah, this backfield is weird because <laughs> last year it was like free Devin Singletary as a rookie. They're, you know, giving it to Frank Gore, cramming up the middle for <laughs> um, a couple of yards on every single play. Like, I know, I don't think it was this bad, but it reminded me of a few years ago when LeGarrette Blunt was on the Lions oh. with Carrion Johnson, and he would, they just for some reason kept giving. Like Garrett blunt the ball so luckily now Frank Gore is gone he had he frees up 166 carries that was only at 3.6 yards a carry so pretty bad better than Le'Veon Bell but still pretty bad um, so <laughs> frees up 166 carries in this offense Devin Singletary last year only had 151 carries but they also bring in rookie running back Zach Moss so I know you're going to talk about Zach Moss here in a second but I just want to break down Singletary first it's that same situation of as a rookie, and Singletary was a third rounder, so decent draft capital for a running back, but he's not one of these top of the first round guys that's going to be a stud and in the offense from day one. So it really took him time to get ramped up. And in the first four weeks of last season, he only had five carries a game. Over the last eight games of the season, he had 16 carries a game. So from day one to the end of the season, he you know, it was night and day in terms of his usage in the playoffs. We ha we saw him have a really good game against Houston. I remember watching that game and Devin Singletary felt like the lone bright spot for this Bills offense. They could not get anything going unless it was Devin Singletary. He also had six catches for 76 yards in that game. So I think Devin Singletary is going to have a much better season this year. I have him going from 150 up to 200 carries. Um, and I also have his target volume going up to 60 targets. So I, that's around 12 carries and four targets a game, um, which, you know, doesn't break the bank. It's nothing crazy. Like, it's it's a very realistic number. But for Singletary, a very efficient player, uh, a guy who had 5.1 yards per carry last season, fourth in the NFL, I think, you know, that's enough volume for him to do some damage as an RB2. Right now, he's in PPR. He's the RB23 in ADP. I think that's that's about right where I have him as well. And I think he has the upside, a little bit more upside than a guy like David Johnson. I don't have the injury risk with Devin Singletary that a James Conner would give well, me. Well, Singletary you know, so. did miss time last year. He that's did miss fair. time last year. And the one thing I'm concerned about with Singletary is the touchdowns. He only had two last season. With Zach Moss coming in a bigger guy, I think Zach Moss could get a lot of that goal line work. And Josh Allen had nine rushing touchdowns of his own last year. So I, I am worried about that. Yeah, on the year, he had two touchdowns on the ground. He did have two touchdowns through the air. So I do think he'll get, he'll get some more touchdowns there as well. I think a lot of that air volume is going to go to Devin Singletary. But a big concern for me is Zach Moss, who has a, a relatively – similar skill set yes he's more of a power back but he did show great hands in college and so you, know, you add in that limited passing work that's already there it's not like the bills are checking it down so often when when uh josh allen is the one who he wants to take off he is a rushing type of quarterback uh and you definitely see that in the red zone but i loved zach moss coming out of the draft he was a third round pick but he's pro football focuses top running back prospect out of all incoming draft classes from 2020 to 2017 what? uh so I, he was a guy that i no had way. circled prior to the draft oh my god I, I know it's it's insane if you go watch his highlights from utah you will see that he was breaking off big runs right and left putting his shoulder down on <laughs> defenders much bigger than him these linebackers that would approach him just trucking guys and i mean he has that will to score but he landed for me in a gross situation in Buffalo. And, you know, everyone was thinking, oh, the Bills are going to grab this bruiser type back to pair with Singletary, kind of this thunder and lightning um, to replace Frank Gore. But I actually think it'll be more of a 1A or 1B situation, you know, that, that fantasy players don't really want. No, you're not going to like really having either Singletary or Moss uh, unless one of them misses times. The only hope here is that. Uh, you know, the Bills offense is great and that there's enough volume for both of them to be weekly fantasy options. But let's see the odds of that are extremely low. Uh, you know, you said Frank Gore, he vacates 166 targets. If uh, I'm sorry, 166 carries. <laughs> that would Moss... be something. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be like Michael Thomas level. But if, uh, if, if Moss comes in and inherits all of that Frank Gore volume, He's still nothing more than dart throw late in your drafts. So for Moss to be anything more than like an RB4, he's going to have to get 60% or more of the rushing attempts in half of the rushing touchdowns, which I just don't see happening with Singletary and Josh Allen being there, especially as a rookie in this weird COVID year. I think he can be a Singletary handcuff, 
But to be honest, though, if I'm looking at a handcuff, I want to handcuff guys that are a little bit more proven and have a better chance to get in the end zone. I think of Tony Pollard, Alexander Madison, maybe even Boston Scott, who I think has more standalone value than Zach Moss in any sort of PPR. Singletary really isn't a back that you're drafting high enough to require a handcuff. So if Singletary is on your roster, the, the way you should treat Moss is kind of keep your eyes on the waiver wire. See if you can scoop him up cheaper uh, later on to add some depth. I don't know, Alex. Are you, are you seeing like a high upside ceiling with Moss outside of him just getting like, you know, 10 touchdowns? I think the ceiling is there, but it's only going to happen. Like, I think the ceiling is there, but it's not as likely as another one of these handcuffs. Like the guys you mentioned, Boston Scott, even a Chase Edmonds. Um, I mean, obviously, Alexander Madison, Tony Pollard. There's just so many handcuffs that I think have a, a higher likelihood to hit that ceiling. Now, with Zach Moss, I think the upside is there because, one, I think he's a better player than Frank Gore was last season. Two, he's a better pass catcher than Frank Gore. So, we, I mean, Josh Allen doesn't throw the running to the running back position a lot. And when he does, Singletary is a pretty good pass catcher as well. But I think the receiving work is going to be higher than Gore saw. The touchdowns should be there if Josh Allen doesn't vulture nine away from the running backs this year. Maybe the <laughs> offense takes a step forward as well. Well, Zach Moss, he's one of those guys. I'm probably not going to draft him, but I wouldn't be surprised if at some point this season he is one of those hot waiver wire ads to just pick him up, see if he can keep the hot streak going and go from there because I I think he will score touchdowns. I think he will get passing work. And for some reason, if he has a couple straight weeks where he's starting to take over this backfield, he could end up being the guy. I mean, Devin Singletary was a third-round pick just last year. Moss is a third-round pick this year. So I I think the upside is there, but in drafts, I think it might take some time for Moss, so I'm actually going to go the other way um, where I think I could get Moss later on in the season on waivers if he does start to flash. Yeah, I think it really comes down to, you know, for, for both Singletary and Moss, is like, do you believe the Bills are going to be great? Do you think Stefan Diggs coming in is going to elevate this offense even a tier higher than where they were before, which is, I mean, they were a playoff team last year, really have been in that range for a while now. So it just depends on what your outlook on the, the Bills is. I don't see them taking a massive jump. I think they will improve. And for that reason, Zach Moss really isn't a guy on my draft boards. He's more of a, you know, keep your eyes on the waivers. If he's there, scoop him up and stash and see what pans out. You know, we, we keep relating, you know, Zach Moss to a guy that has another third round running back <laughs> who is 12 spots higher than him in ADP. And it's Keyshawn Vaughn. I think if you're a big believer in Keyshawn Vaughn, I think you've got to be a believer in Zach Moss. Don't you agree? hundred percent like I don't know why Vaughn is getting all this hype and we find him going ahead of Ronald Jones sometimes yet Zach Moss is virtually undrafted which just makes no sense to me yeah either either one of these are dart throws I really haven't been touching either of them very often I just think there's dart throws that you can take a couple rounds later when you're trying to get your quarterback your tight end your handcuffs